My um, name is Christina Blumel, um, and I work with FHI 360, which is a large uh, non-governmental organization that works in the areas of health and education, um, technology, uh, environment, and economic growth, essentially. Um, and my unit is called Tech Lab, and we are the uh, unit within FHI 360 that does um, technology application development. Um, and we develop applications to uh, enhance um, the work that our programs do, um, essentially to increase the scale, to increase the impact. Um, we really try to integrate the best technology uh, solutions into the programmatic approaches. You know, I uh, was at the opening um, session for the summit and I really did enjoy the remarks and the presentation by uh, Fiona McCauley. Um, I loved her presentation of a bicycle and unicycles. I found them very inspiring, um, in part because I, I do see that um, presenting single solutions or s single approaches in development, particularly in relation to youth, I think is problematic. Um, people don't um, exist in one dimension. Um, and so I think that you can strengthen impact if you can uh, address um, the different needs that they have, um, either through connecting programs or um, having you know multifaceted, uh, multifaceted types of projects. So, so I just found that to be a really, a really nice takeaway and a really important one uh, to start the summit off. I, obviously, there's the the personal aspect um, where you can actually meet people who are involved in implementation and they come from all over the world. Um, and to have, that, um, to have that direct connection, to have the opportunity to hear people, to have the opportunity to meet with them, to talk with them is very important. I'm a researcher uh, at this point and so <laughs> for me also um, I would say that having um, videos and other information available is tremendously important. Um, I really appreciate that as a researcher. I use that for my research. It was tremendously helpful for me to find out what happened at the 2013 summit. You know, um, so it, it's it's very valuable, and I hope that um, the organization will continue to support um, that kind of information dissemination. Um, and they do it in multiple ways. You know, maybe it's a video here, or maybe it's a summary publication here. Um, maybe it's the website with you know all of the resources that it has, but I I would encourage them to continue to do the kind of you know real time talk to the experts, but also to continue to make um, you know publications available. They all have their different audiences and they meet different needs. That's a very large question. To that's a huge one. What is the yeah. biggest? <laughs> what's the biggest impediment? Um, uh, to development and I would say that maybe the answer is slightly different depending on where you are because the developing world is just a very diverse place um, and even within continents like Africa and even sub-Saharan Africa you have many different conditions um, but I, I would say that um, one of the things that I think is important is governments have to be able must continue to develop capacity to provide public goods um, and you know I'm since Ebola is very topical right now and I'm, I'm looking at the way that countries in West Africa, some of them have struggled greatly to provide a response, a public health response, I think you can, you can take that example and you can say, and, and we need public goods in education and we need public goods in, you know, in terms of um, you know, sanitation and we need public goods in terms of you know, making sure that people have access to information and markets. And so I would say that, you know, we need to, donors and the international community and in development, we need to continue to work very closely with our government partners and we need to keep our eye on strengthening that government capacity because, you know, at the end of the day, um, the government is going to be there to, to provide those services and, and we can't, we can't let, that <laughs> get, let that get out of our sight. Um, well, I was really... Um, happy to do this research with youth and workforce development and ICTs because what I see is that that we have a lot of um, experience, we have a lot of cases, we have a lot of um, 
knowledge that I think is, uh, has kind of developed into a critical mass. And we have organizations like Rockefeller and um, also the MasterCard Foundation have supported some very important um, research, for example. Um, but what I didn't find was something that was more overarching. Um, to, to take a broad look at ICTs in workforce development programs and try to draw some of the larger overarching conclusions. Um, and so we're trying to, to say with this research, you know, point out the fact that there is a critical mass there and we do have experience and we need to analyze it and synthesize it and get it out to the implementers um, and continue to do that because, you know, the information's there and I think that the, the other um, panelists that I'm going to be presenting with also demonstrate that, um, that trend very, very well. And it's very exciting to see, if you work in ICT, um, it is very exciting to see that that kind of research is, is actually there and there is that focus there.